Hi, my name is Katie and I'm glad to have you back at the OCD Illustrated channel. This is the final video of a series on exposure and response prevention. And this video is about the RP part in ERP, ritual or response prevention. Although there is only one video to talk about ritual and response prevention, it's really important. So that's why I've added a few stars. In brief, ritual or response prevention is not doing compulsions when you're going about your day-to-day -day business. So, when should you do ritual prevention? All the time. Um, if you're doing your exposures, but then you're going through your day still doing compulsions, you're canceling it out. Ritual prevention has to happen as much of the time as possible. Now, I know that may sound really daunting, but we're not gonna ask you to do it for everything all at once. So, what do you do ritual prevention for? You do ritual prevention for anything that is at a 0 to 2 SUD score or for compulsions related to any task that you've crossed off your hierarchy. So there's a quick picture of our SUD scale. Um, you're going to do ritual prevention for anything that is in that green do always category. Now, just like you made a system for tracking your exposures, it's going to be important to have a system for tracking your ritual prevention as well. It helps you be informed about how you're doing helps you see your progress, and helps you stay motivated. There are a variety of ways that you can keep track of the rituals that you are hopefully not doing. Um, and here are two of my favorite ways. The first way is what we call a ban book. Um, and it's you try to get like a little index card size notebook to carry with you um, and to track your rituals. Start out by picking a compulsion that you're going to track. Um, and for this example, I'm going to be using the compulsion of praying and crossing yourself. This is a compulsion that's common for people with scrupulosity, especially religious scrupulosity. Make a simple T-chart, and in the first column, write submits. This is where you're going to track using tallies um, all the times that you have an urge to do a compulsion, and you do that compulsion. And on the other side, write resists. This is where you're going to track all the times that you have an urge to do a compulsion and you resist it and choose not to. Here we can see I've started making a tally to compare the number of times I submitted with the number of times I resisted. At the beginning, it's expected that you're going to have more times you submit than times you resist. Over time, if you're committed to ritual prevention, what you'll notice is that that ratio flip-flops. You'll have fewer submits and more resists. And then, if you're really consistent um, for even longer, what you'll see is that your submits won't go down, but so does your resists, because you're having fewer urges to do compulsions. A second way to track compulsions um, is using a timer. For this, you'll need a stopwatch or a phone timer, um, and just another index card size piece of paper or book that is going to be your tracking sheet. Now, my chart is going to have three columns so that I can show you exactly how we're coming up with the final numbers. Um, once you get the hang of this, if you just want to use the final column, that's okay. I've labeled the columns last for the previous time I've done a compulsion, current for the most recent time I've done a compulsion, and elapsed time for in between. So if I woke up in the morning and the first compulsion I did was at 7.15 a.m., and then I was ritual free until 7.33 when I did another compulsion, the elapsed time in between would be 18 minutes. I'm going to carry that 7.33 time down. Then, say that I resisted all rituals until 7.47. I'd write down that 7.47 and calculate out that the elapsed time between 7.33 and 7.47 is 14 minutes. Again, same pattern, carry down the 7.47, Wait till you do your next ritual, say at 9.25, and calculate the time in between. In this case, 1 hour and 38 minutes. If you're diligent about this, over time, what you're going to see is that the elapsed time between rituals or compulsions gets longer and longer. Up to like 5, 6, 7 hours at a time. And that means that you're doing really awesome with your ritual prevention. In summary, ritual prevention is really important. You should be doing it all the time for anything that causes a zero to two level of distress or is something you've crossed off your hierarchy. Um, and you can track rituals using either a band book or using a timer 